So we focus on the visual system in part because it's one that's readily accessible. Uh, we're very visual creatures, so that's it's our, our most used sense, you could argue. Um, it's the one that's most devastating when lost. Um, we, we have a very good model system of the visual system in the non-human primate, which is the primary animal model system that my lab uses to study the visual system. They also have visual systems that are very comparable to our own. So we have a model to access the system. And because uh, we are such visual creatures, our world has built up uh, devices for controlling visual stimuli. We usually call them displays or TVs, but those turn out to be very good in experimental research to be able to deliver controlled stimuli, unlike some of the other sens sensory systems, say the somatosensory system, the touch system, um, which is much more difficult to control. Um, uh, and so th these are all the reasons that, that the visual system is a great target of opportunity. Uh, well, controlling visual, controlling visual input is, is quite easy. As I mentioned, we can, can, can play images into our eyes. And the, the most interesting things of control for us is to be able to control neural control your perceptions by direct neural control. So, so the applications that might be, again, if, if you can't see, if you don't have eyes, and I need to inject signals, how, what, what format should those signals be in, and where should I inject them? Um, and so you can imagine that that has applications, again, for the blind. Um, and as our society goes forward, it may have applications even for those that are uh, that, that, that still have sight to be able to access the brain's representations directly. So when we think about controlling vision, that those are the, the kind of applications uh, we think about most, most nearly replacing uh, lost vision or perhaps augmenting vision in the future by direct neural control. That's a sort of longer term application. The most near term are the applications, again, of building systems that work very much like our own brain. And in fact, our lab and others have contributed to systems that are now actually being deployed that are some of the best vision systems in the world. You may not know this, but, but, but deep neural networks, which are driven by brain research, uh, and then with a lot of computer engineering on top of them, are now the state of the art in vision. In vision. And um, so those, those, those algorithms um, didn't just grow up out of an engineer's head, but were actually inspired by work uh, on the brain, and we hope that our work on the brain will contribute to the next generation of algorithms that works even better than the current artificial systems. Examples where vision algorithms that have been inspired by neural networks uh, ex already exist in the world are, are in places like uh, automatic car driving systems. Some of those systems are starting to use vision systems that, that are, are inspired by neural ideas. Um, those say, those, these kind of systems are also being deployed in things like medical imaging. Um, anything that takes sensor data is now uh, being re-looked at in the context of deep neural networks that again are driven by uh, uh, neuroscience uh, research. And so there's a wide range of applications currently being built and um, those, are, those are all happening right now in, in, in not just vision, but these same networks are applying to other things like natural language processing and things even beyond vision. So, so visual recognition is a problem that we take for granted because it seems so natural. I often say in my talks that I sort of ask, you know, my mom will ask me what, what I do and I say I study how we see and she says, well, we just, we just see, it's, it's obvious, it's easy, we do it. And it's so easy that we take it for granted. Um, but it turns out to be quite computationally complex and one of the things that has surprised us in our work there is that we, uh, many of the workers in the field thought that this would be a problem that would require many processing loops, recurrent neural networks to solve where information would have to be propagated up, edges would have to be computed, eventually you build up an object, you might have to have uh, circular feedback loops to be able to compute complicated structures. It turns out that you're able to compute something that very much matches human perception and neural activity by doing what's essentially called feed-forward processing, stacked sets of nonlinear filters that are essentially just pushing information forward through a series of layers that look like the visual areas we see in the brain. It's a very sort of on its face simple form of computation, yet it's activated in parallel with a appropriate non-linearities, appropriate slight changes in the processing that are learned either through evolution or development, we're not sure yet, but that simple form of final computation buys you a lot of processing power. And it was 
thought that that would not be the way it works, but a close examination of the brain shows that the times at which you're able to compute are so fast, and, and the models are now consistent with this idea that you compute this almost in a, a natural automatic way that, that the visual system is set up to take any image data and make the content explicit in a very natural, a very quick feed forward way rather than having to build symbolic logic or complicated structures that require recurrent loops of processing, which was how computer vision had thought about this problem early on. And the brain teaches us, you no, know, it's done in this way that is very effortless and almost very automatic, which resonates with how we feel about it, that it feels quite easy and automatic. And it's because we come somehow pre-built, at least after development, to have such a, a very fast, automatic processing system. And that was a, a shock to many workers in the field. Um, was maybe less of a shock to those of us who were looking more directly at the brain. But is now the, really the standard model of how vision should be done even in machine systems.